Good morning. We have a spectacular show this morning with friend and colleague Gadi Taub calling in from Israel. We're going to be talking about uh, Biden and the bomb. Why do American progressives, why are they so keen to pass the most destructive weapon known to man to the Islamic Republic of Iran? Um, we're going to get to that in one second. We're going to talk about a lot more. We're going to talk about uh, we're going to talk about what's happening in the Middle East in general. We're going to talk about, or we're going to get Gaddy's viewpoint on what's happening here inside the United States as someone who's been watching us and who's some, someone who loves our country dearly. I want to get his perspective on what it looks like from abroad. So we'll be going to that in one second. First, I want to remind you that at the 20 minute mark, we're going to cut away briefly. If you are watching on YouTube or Facebook, we will go at the 20 minute mark to Epoch Times TV exclusively. Please make the jump with us at the 20 minute mark. I'll give you a little bit of a countdown. You're not going to want to miss our full hour long conversation with a great Gadi Tab. And without further ado, Gadi, welcome and hope things are going on well in Israel. Greetings. Thanks for having me, Lee. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. So look, so here in the United States, we're, 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 we're reading the press, finding out what was going on in the Middle East, what the Biden administration, or, or rather what the, the president of the United States was up to in the Middle East, whether it was fist bumping with MBS, whether it was, uh, whether, whether it was visiting Palestinian territories and, and unnerving all sorts of Israeli officials. He's now back in the United States and he's got COVID. So I'd like to think he did. We gave it to him, that. didn't we? That, that's what I was thinking. I saw some of the, I saw, I saw some of the video, and it looked like he was coughing in Jerusalem at the end of that's, last week. That, he was giving a speech. Is this what happened? Who did he get it from? If he got it from our now Prime Minister Yahya Lapid, it would be, uh, it would be poetic, because because the whole point of the visit was, yeah. in, in American terms, at least as I understand them. Um, the whole point of the visit was to get uh, pictures of hugs with Israelis, yeah. photo ops with smiles, because this is what Biden needs in terms of your um, uh, domestic policy is right. to say, look, there's no problem with Iran. Look, even the Israelis are happy. Yeah. So it's fine. And yeah. and he and he came upon Yair Lapid. I, I, I send your guys at the, the production his Yair yeah. Lapid's yeah. Facebook page. So yeah. uh, so if you see it, you see that his background. Can we picture, get a look at that. Do you guys have that bad back in the back in the studio? Let's see. Is that he, he, that's not Yair Lapid? That's your cat. Gadi, that's my cat, and there's no way yeah. to explaining to cats what a podcast yeah. is. So, um, okay. so Yair Lapid appears. The, the, his background picture is him having a laugh with Joe Biden, because mm. our prime minister used to be an anchor. It's yes. really bad policy to have journalists run things. They, they're not they're not competent to run journalism, that's, let alone that's, politics. That's true. That's so true. he so so he thinks of it as a celebrity. He's look mm. how look he's he's having a laugh with these the most important. Mm person in the world so it, it, and Yair Lapid falls right into the trap I don't know right. if you saw the footage when he just got off the plane it was like Joe Biden as far as I can see I don't want to insult anyone as far as I can see yeah, he, I, he I performs in the first two minutes of every event and then he goes off track but the first thing yeah. he did which I assume is on his card is to yeah. hug Yair Lapid he just he got yeah. off the plane and he hugged him so, you so see, that's this what happened what, that's, That's what, what they wanted. Instead of social distancing, no, they wanted the embrace. And little did anyone know that showing to embrace Israeli officials would actually land Joe uh, Joe Biden in, in, in sick bed with COVID. They should have but, figured but the, that the, out. The, the, the fit of the two the two is just is just perfect. Yair Lapid just wants a photo op, and yeah. the administration—I don't know if it's Biden or the, or the, or the his handlers. What they need is a picture of happy Israelis with American policy. Yeah. And so, if in while doing this he got COVID, that would be like that would be like a, the t, a, a good episode for a TV drama, right? Yeah. It would be like picture perfect. So what happened there before? Look, let's cut to what happened in Israel in a second. We'll go to that in a second. What 
what I want to know is what are the discussions? Because this has been going on now since what? Since 2012. First, it was Joe Biden's boss, Barack, even earlier, 2009. First, it was Joe Biden's boss, Barack Obama, who wanted to give the Iranians uh, an industrial sized nuclear weapons program. Uh, Donald Trump came in, said, I think that's not a good idea. It's not a great deal. He withdrew from the deal in May 2018. But all Joe Biden and his aides can talk about in the Middle East is, Let's get that nuclear deal with Iran, which they say will restrain the Iranians. But actually, actually, as we know, looking at the sunset clauses, the purpose is to legitimize Iran's uh, nuclear bomb. So what were Israeli officials saying about this? What's their reading on on the Biden administration's Middle East policy, in particular, the Iran policy? They are they're, they're, they're speaking two voices. One is the voice that that is public and mm. it's and, and there they completely capitulate to the American demand. Um, we, we'll get a little uh, later to to Netanyahu's yeah. policy, which Netanyahu clearly refused to cooperate with, is to keep this agreements private. Mm. So they've agreed for that. This means they they lose leverage. You know, mm. Netanyahu yeah. did a very bold move back then when he went behind Barack Obama's uh, back to speak to the two houses of Congress and and made a huge difference because he he galvanized yeah. the internal opposition to the deal now these the, these guys are a- acting this this government is acting on the assumption that if we keep on friendly terms with the americans mm-hmm. we will convince them because you see the americans yeah. have just they just didn't understand that this <laughs> yeah, is right, very man. dangerous and we'll tell right. them and then they'll see and they'll stop right. this because who wants iran to have a bomb yeah. so they're not seeing the radicalism you know i keep saying mm-hmm. to israelis as a, a, to to explain what is going on i i keep telling them that barack obama was the first edward saidian president hmm. he 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 and, and i remember hearing this from a from a, a professor at hebrew u before hmm. i i clearly understood what was going on he said this is the president of the third world it's not the president of the united hmm. states and 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 i i think they 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 completely misunderstand this because you know people who go through academia in the years that i went through academia or before me when uh, barack obama uh, went through academia and actually at Columbia, I think he heard Edward say it himself, what you get is indoctrination, which you get a picture of the world in which evil is we and good is the other. And so you end up, I think Henry Kissinger remarked that that apology is not a good foreign policy for a superpower. And so you have a, a, a whole the whole foreign policy, which is a moral drama in which uh, the West is supposed to cleanse itself of its sins. Now, look, it looks, if you're in the Middle East, it looks mad. They, it, it's as if, you know, all these talks of otherness, they don't take the other seriously at all. When the Iranians say, no, we want to destroy Israel, we want to destroy America, they just say, oh, yeah, we haven't pacified them enough yet. We'll give them something. <laughs> then they, they'll see it's all our fault. So you see, it's complete narcissism. You think a foreign policy of another power is just up to you, if, uh, how nice you are, and th- that will determine what they do. It won't. <laughs> 